Hey everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and tabletop role-playing aficionado. Welcome to another Roll20 review, my written and video review series where I take a look at the marketplace section of online role-playing website, Roll20.net. This video, I'll be reviewing Escape from the Prison Moon, the second module from the Against the Aeon Throne Starfinder Adventure Path designed by Paizo and adapted by Roll20. Review copy has been provided for the purposes of this review. If you enjoy my videos, consider supporting me via patreon.com slash roguewatson. Shoutouts to my platinum patrons, Andrew, Richard, Joe, Will, Tiny Dancer, Nick, Andy, and Chris. And gold patrons, RPG Papercrafts, Charming Grenade, Pretty Boy, Nima, Marco State, Vicente, Gilberto, Sean AK, Cert 2B, Adam, Dead Lizard Lounge, Sam, Rosh, and Lumpy Spuds. Thank you all very much for your support. I uh, enjoyed the first Against the Aeon Throne Path, The Reach of Empire, which is the only splash screen I have now because... Uh, now, whenever you purchase additional adventure paths on Roll20, they add them into the existing one, basically as DLC rather than as separate campaigns, which is probably a good way to do it because it's just fully integrated with all the stuff you've already got. Um, but I don't have a separate splash screen, so you're going to look at this one for now. Uh, I enjoyed it. I did feel like it was a little bit lacking in the alien exoticism that I was looking for with you know, a sci-fi RPG. I do feel like Escape from the Prison Moon helps uh, provide that a little better. Uh, what it really does is, as you can tell by the title, provide a really fun kind of infiltration heist stealth mission for the third act, which is pretty neat. It's not super involved. We're still very low level. This is designed for third level uh, Starfinder player characters who are coming off of the first, uh, the Reach of Empire, where they should reach third level and they reach fifth by the end. So it's pretty low level, so it's not going to be too fancy schmance. You don't have a whole lot of, you know, abilities or uh, options, but I feel like it does squeeze a pretty good amount of tactically interesting choices and some fun role playing opportunities and exploration, all the things I'm looking for in basically any tabletop RPG campaign scenario. And the second part, so there's a three-part uh, journal, as usual with these adventure paths, is kind of a fun, uh, most icily, um, uh, I'm picturing the that like marketplace area from the second Hellboy movie, I think, uh, where it's just a whole bunch of just weird-ass alien exotic creatures, but it's not a dungeon crawl. It is like you're going into a, uh, like a, mer- like a, a marketplace, a bazaar, uh, with, and just, trying to get a bunch of supplies and you're learning information you're trying to gain um the trust and the location of an informant that can you know help you uh, get into the prison it, it's a really neat scenario it actually has a full battle map which is one thing i've been really really impressed with these uh with the starfinder and with all the paizo adventure paths in general as much as my complaints have been from the recent uh dnd switch to kind of a dyson logo style you know black and white graph paper style maps I love that Starfinder and Pathfinder continue to put out the really gorgeous full-color maps that I prefer, and this one is no different. It has some really great maps. Now, it only has basically the two maps, which is that um, uh, it's a a mining outpost, Outpost Z, I think is the name of it, that's not really meant to be a battle map. You're just kind of walking around doing some shopping, although there is some exploration involved, and you are, there's like a little bit of a nest of bugs or something you fight. And then, of course, the actual uh, prison cell map, which is pretty neat because it is a colony on a moon, so it's got a bunch of the bubbles, you know, with little offshoots, like little spokes and wheels, and it's a neat design, and I like it quite a bit. So I would say overall it is a... I think it's an improvement over the first one. I, again, I thought the first one was just okay and was um, elevated because of the really good map art it had, the fact that it had separate battle maps for all of them. You know, obviously, please watch that review if you haven't, because I'll be referencing it quite a bit if I haven't already. Uh, and I think this one does an even better job of that while still telling a pretty cool story. I do have a few uh, complaints, but they're pretty minor quibbles overall. So let's go over what you get with the a uh, complete package of Against the Aeon Throne AP2 Escape from the Prison Moon. Uh, for $22.99 on the Roll20 nar- Marketplace, it is a level three adventure divided into three parts. Again, it is designed to come after the Reach of Empire, which is the first one. It includes three five-foot battle maps that have tokens and dynamic lighting in place. Dynamic lighting, of course, you have to have a plo, a plo, a plus or pro subscription. Uh, it also includes a black hexagonal space map, which I believe was included in the uh, first one. So you can put little spaceship tokens on there and relative to each other. Um, an alphabetized token page, which I can switch to that so you can see some of the uh, critters that are in the 
new one, which unfortunately, this is going to be one of my complaints, is that most of the named NPCs do not have art, which is a big bummer. 14 NPC character sheets with matching tokens and player handouts, which are going to be uh, these down here, basically the more generic uh, creatures, although I don't know where some of these... I don't know if some of these are included in here, but I did not see them at all in the actual adventure. So Void Palm, Radiation Drake, and Stone Network. I don't know if these things are going to come into play in a future campaign. They were just included in here, or maybe if there was some random encounter table I missed. But nowhere did I see where some of these more fancier creatures were actually used. Uh, one unique named NPC character sheet with token and handout. I really only counted the boss in this one, which is uh, this one. You can see it's got actual uh, hit points and armor and everything listed. Um, Iolastrilla is like the boss guard that you have to battle at the very end of the prison escape. Uh, the rest of them aren't really meant to have actual uh, character sheets as far as I'm concerned in terms of being involved in combat. Although one of them, one of the prisoners you can free, you can totally like give her a gun and I believe she will help you. But uh, as you can see, it's a big bummer that most of them don't have uh, picture arts. Grub is one of the prisoners and there's a couple others. Some of these are the merchants that you meet, which are really kind of cool. There's, um, I, I'm getting... I <laughs> already uh, sidetracked from my listing, but I want to show you. No. Roll 20, shift tab. It's not going to do it. Okay. Um, it's like a squid that can manipulate the water bubble around them, which is really neat. All right. Two new starships with tokens and handouts, over 50 magic item text handouts, which is a huge increase from the first one, which had barely any magic items. This one goes nuts because an entire second part of it is basically shopping. It is... Uh, a whole bunch of different merchants that you can buy supplies with. Hopefully you've made a lot of money from the first adventure and you'll be needing some supplies for part three of this one. So you get a chance to do a whole lot of shopping. There's a lot of magic items here. The bummer is they're almost all just pure text, which is, I don't, I'd have to go back through the Starfinder rulebook again, but I don't know if it was just a lack of magic item art or what the deal is there, but almost none of these have, these are still player handouts in that you can give them to a player and they've got all the information but it's a bummer that we don't have art for them. Uh, we do get detailed and background information on the Aslani Star Empire, the Aeon Throne, its history, culture, and citizens. That's actually a big part of what we get in the second one, which is under this section right here, Empire of the Aeon Throne. We get a bunch of information here, detailed uh, history and background, uh, their general culture. They are basically like human supremacists, uh, which is pretty shitty and a bunch of the uh, different races that appear under the Star Empire, which if you're already new to Starfinder and you barely have any recognition of the player races, then this is already going to be like information overload because there's a whole other group of races basically that uh, can be found in the Aslani star space, which is a completely different area, not controlled by the pack worlds. You're basically in hostile territory here, which is pretty cool to, to start off pretty early. So... That is what is included. So to go over the adventure really quickly, uh, part one. So you, you've you saved the Nekadonis colony, uh, prevented, uh, or you didn't prevent anything. They they basically, you were looking for this android that is your party's friend. Uh, she found some ancient uh, drive that the Aslani are, also, or at least this rogue faction of the Aslani are after. Um, you went to this colony to try and go after her. You found where the crashed starship was and all that, but all the important things are, of course, not there. So it's kind of a, you're just chasing after them the whole time. At least at the end of this one, you finally do rescue her. Uh, but it's crazy that their whole purpose is to get her. You don't get her until the end of the second adventure path out of three. This one's only three adventure paths long, which is a lot shorter compared to what we usually get, which I believe are six adventure path campaigns. So the first one is you getting a belated... Uh, message from uh, what is her name? Sedona, as well as your Starfinder adventure uh, hierarchy that's basically saying, hey, you need to go here and uh, into the Islani Empire and actually recover her and try to figure out more of this drive. Basically give you more information. It just happens that you didn't get the information until now. Uh, and then you can meet up with a merchant and the merchant will basically, or as you enter the Islani star space, the merchant will tell you to go to a abandoned outpost. This is outpost Z, which we'll go ahead and switch to here. And at outpost Z, you're supposed to meet up with another uh, figure who can then help you get into the actual prison where Sedona is currently being kept. So this is outpost Z map, which again, I love their battle map art design. It is fantastic. It's exactly what I want in my battle maps. It looks great. And it's not even, I mean, I use the term battle map, but you're not really even battling here. There's these two Dreyliks which follow you around and they will fight you. Otherwise, you're just chatting with a bunch of folks. 
Uh, it's a real like industrial looking map too. It's really cool. It's supposed to be just a repurposed. It's an abandoned mining colony that all these um, races who eke out this terrible existence under the Islani Empire have kind of uh, found to be a home. Just a really neat location. Uh, there are some bugs you can battle here. There's a lot of just really cool characters though. There's one uh, f- just this messed up looking figure who is, God, I wish I could show this art. The shift click is not working for me, of course, now that I started this review. Uh, let's see if I can find his shark under, um, under alien archives, named NPCs, Shachir, hand out his Shachir. All right. So like this guy is just dying from a disease. So he's got like bugs poking at him and he's got sh- parts of his shell exposed, but he's really friendly and he'll help translate stuff, especially if you heal him. Uh, or cure his disease, then he'll be extremely friendly for you. There's a lot of really crazy merchants. There's this one uh, thing that walks around like this hulking brute with just a mouthful of teeth that um, understands very little of culture or society, but no, it's it's learned how to trade. So it'll, of course, walk up to a player, give them an item, and then just take one of their items, and then players can have, uh, attempt to deal with that however they can, or they can fight it. Look at that thing. <laughs> Paralith. Uh, so that's a really neat scenario. There's a little like I mentioned before, the little jellyfish thing or cuttlefish that sits in a jar and can communicate via colors. I'm getting a lot of the cool alien exotic stuff that I really missed from the first adventure path. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I wanted. So I was really happy to see it here. Uh, Here's the cuttlefish. I was really pleased to see these kind of creatures here because I feel like that was missing from the first one, which was mostly just on a planet, saving humans from other humans. Uh, and I didn't get a lot of the alien stuff. So this one, it just throws a whole bunch of alien shit at you, which I think is really, really fun. Even if they're not, I, frankly, I think this is the more interesting way to do it than versus like some kind of dungeon crawl with a bunch of hostile aliens. This time you're having to deal with them from like a cultural role-playing standpoint, which is really fun. And a lot of them can lead to some really funny moments. Like this creature, um, is not hostile, but communicates by trying to show dominance. So it's going to start off like posturing and opening its jaws and just this huge rows of teeth. And the players have to deal with that. And if, if they dominate it right back, you know, they do a show of force, then of course it will immediately open its wares and start uh, wanting to trade. So I think it's a really neat scenario. I like it a lot. We don't even really need a battle map here because it's a whole lot of uh, role-playing encounters. But the fact that we do get the maps uh, can lead you into then turning any of these into a battle, which is really neat. So I like the situation a lot. I think it's really fun. Uh, eventually, they meet with the uh, quest-giving informant that they need, who gives them a side quest to, hey, not only will I give you this security clearance to get you into the prison, but I want you to save uh, three prisoners that are in there. They were my buddies, part of this archaeological dig team, and I would be uh, very happy and reward you if you help these, which I love. You know, Give them a side quest while they're doing the main quest. They do have uh, one more task beforehand, which they have to lure a ship into uh they have to steal a ship in order to get into the prison which one thing this campaign does very very well is give the players some options on how to do things so for example in search of a ship uh you can investigate you can talk to the denizens to try to get them to lure a ship in there um you can fight the ship uh it's the relic here there's rules for all that in fact there is a uh Actually, the battle map is not for this ship. It's for the, the ship at the end. But it, it's a it's a neat scenario where you have a, a couple different options, just as you have a couple different options on once you actually make it to the prison on how you want to then uh, infiltrate said prison. And this is when we get to the really cool map, which is the actual prison map itself. So this is on a moon colony. You get a lot of the cool bubbles everywhere. Players have to make their way. And it's a lot of social role-playing rather than literally, you know, you're not really crawling along air ducts and that kind of stealthy mission, you're more just trying to do the, you know, walk in there with Chewbacca in the handcuffs kind of a stealth where you're trying to disguise yourselves and uh, make it more of a social role-playing event. But I really like the way that it uses this alert system and it raises an alertness level in the facility, depending on how many mistakes or bad things the players do. You know, they fa- they fail skill checks, they just do a really bad job role-playing, or maybe they have... Uh, a lot of non-humans in their party that are trying to pass themselves off as Aslani. All these things can raise the alertness level of this facility, and that then adds a lot of complications depending on what alertness level they're at. So I thought that was a really, really smart, clever way of making it an infiltration stealth mission without immediately saying, you know, you're either in stealth mode or you're fucked, basically, or things have gone completely messed up. 
and you know alarms are going and everything else. So it has this nice graduating progression system for tracking how well or how poorly the players are doing all the way to where if they do an exceptional job, they can even escape the facility without having to battle that final starship, uh, depending on how well their skill checks are and how low they've kept the alertness level, which is really, really neat. So I thought that was a really, a particularly interesting system. I think the map is pretty cool. It's not terribly exotic. As I mentioned, it's a pretty low level campaign still. So I think they're level four by the time they make it here. Uh, it's mostly just a bunch of human guards, a few drones, there's some uh, zombies shuffling around outside on the moon the players could deal with. But they have a lot of different options. They can hack into cameras, they can set off alarms, they can turn off the oxygen. Uh, they could technically get in these uh, uh, exosuits and then crawl around the outside. There's all kinds of, you know, they could split the party and do all these different things. They could free the prisoners that the informant wanted you to free, which some of them are... Uh, very combat heavy, and some of them are very not combat heavy, so they would actually slow the party down, for example. One of them would just go crazy and start like killing a bunch of people. It's some kind of bestial creature. It's it's really cool. There's a lot going on here. I did appreciate it. Um, the bummer is for these important NPCs that I thought were important, which is all pretty much all of the prisoners, plus Sedona, which is the damn uh, android lady on the, on the front cover of the module, is not given its own, uh, her own... Uh, picture icon, which is really annoying. And that's something that uh, unfortunately Roll20 does if they don't, if there's no picture supplied in the, you know, by Paizo themselves, they have to just kind of do this generic, well, let's just write the word here. And it's a bummer to see that on several different uh, important NPCs. It's okay to see that occasionally, but especially once you get to the prisoners, you know, some of these prisoners could potentially be really, really cool characters um, that I would have liked to see maybe even a little bit further fleshed out and make it so the players really want to rescue them and, and some of them could really help or, or have some information and all that. Uh, and especially Sedona, who the person is literally you're doing this entire campaign for and this entire adventure for is not given a, a token art, which just seems like you could just crop the picture from the damn cover and put it on here. Granted, she doesn't have a stat block because she's not meant to be actually used uh, in the context of this adventure, I guess, cause she's really weakened, but that feels just really weird. So it's a bummer to see that, but I really do like this map. I like the way this, uh, campaign part plays out quite a bit. And of course it ends in a frilling, uh, frilling, a thrilling battle in space as you leave with the spaceship. And this, of course, spaceship tra flags you down. And if you've got any escaping prisoners on you immediately opens fire. And that's where we get this, uh, third battle map, which is the vanguard parapet again really really cool to see uh no tokens on this map but i think it's just completely up to the uh, gm on what actually you want to use but i think everything should have yep so dynamic lighting is in place you can see uh in fact if i want to show that on the tokens let's go to a different map uh if you've got pro or plus subscription dynamic lighting will work for you tokens are already here so you can see if we use i don't know if these guys actually have it okay let's give them uh, sight. Let's give that one sight. Okay. So that's kind of what the dynamic lighting, uh, looks like in all of these different areas. So very, very tight, uh, you know, corridors, hallways, really, really cool feeling. I like this map design quite a bit. And I think the battle map art is really, really well done. That excites me about playing on these maps and experiencing this kind of stuff. And I feel like this one hits a lot of the notes that I thought, uh, were not hit in the first adventure. Uh, with the weird caveat that this one is kind of low on combat, which is odd because I almost never have that as a as a complaint that a tabletop RPG of which mostly I'm looking at D and D, Starfinder, and Pathfinder is low on combat because those are all very combat heavy systems. And if the players play their cards right, you know they can. Uh, part one has no combat. Part two. I think you have maybe have one combat encounter with a bunch of bugs in a nest. And then part three, which is here, you could basically... I, I'd have to look again and see if it were possible to talk your way out of the final boss fight, because that might be a more uh, forcible one. But, I mean, you could... It would be very, very difficult, but you could make it through the majority of part three without a single fight as well. Or you could fight your way through it, although that would also be very challenging, because you've got alarms going off and more guards appearing. So it's generally, you're not supposed to fight your way through it, but very, very low on combat, which I am going to include as a complaint because that's, is one of the three main, you know, pillars that I'm looking for. I'm looking for exploration, uh, which is usually a dungeon crawl 
or finding out clues or puzzles and that kind of thing. I'm looking for social and role-playing opportunities, which this one has a lot of and does a great job at. And I'm looking for how fun and interesting are the combat encounters. And that is probably the weakest link here, which is a very odd, rare uh, complaint to have. All right, so let's go over my uh, pros and cons for Escape from the Prison Moon. Pros, full-color battle maps. Love them, love them, love them. I love this art design so much. Glad to have them. Pro, multiple options for players to discover information, hijacking a spaceship, and infiltrating a prison colony. I really like there are multiple um, options for players to go through all these events and that they are listed specifically for GMs as kind of a preemptive measure to think, okay, what are your players going to do? What kind of things could you even suggest your players to do if they're kind of lost? And here are all the different skill checks and, and things available to them. So I do feel like as, as generally linear as this one is, uh, they still have a lot of options within those steps that they have to take, which is probably the best balance to, to, to do here. Uh, and pro alertness level is a smart way to afford consequences and track progress through the prison. I really like that alertness level system a lot for a stealth mission. Cons, as I mentioned, very few actual combat encounters. Uh, most teams would probably end up fighting a lot more in this third area, but you got to be careful because you're really not supposed to fight too much. But and, and and none of the fights are particularly interesting. We're not fighting a lot of cool big monsters, or there's not a lot of environmental challenges or anything of that nature. You're basically just fighting a bunch of guards. So it's a little bit on the mundane side when it comes to combat. Uh, and cons, many of the important NPCs, like the prisoners, lack token art. That's always a bummer. Um, usually, it just kind of depends on whether or not I think these are very important characters that deserve to have token art, because you're always going to get some of these in, in a Roll20 adaptation, because not everybody has art, and I get that. But this one, I really feel like, especially with the prisoners and with Sedona, uh, that there should have been some art there. Final verdict, Escape from the Prison Moon continues the Starfinder Adventure Path's excellent battle map art design while providing lots of interesting tactical options for a stealthy prison rescue. Thank you to everyone for watching this video review. You can see my written review at roguewatson.com. You can support my work at patreon.com slash roguewatson. And you can follow our own Dungeons & Dragons adventures here on my YouTube channel. Thank you.